I just came back from Chicago and I've decided to bring my iPad mini and use four budget items or accessories and I want to see if they work and how well they work throughout my trip. Now this Chicago trip was more personal so I didn't need to bring my laptop to do any heavy work. But I still wanted to write scripts, answer emails, and maybe even do some light editing. So here are my budget items for the iPad mini. First, let's start off with protection. There are plenty of third party cases out there but the one I have here is from Moco. Now this case is kind of close to Apple's smart case where you do have that trifold design so I can fold it, I can put it at a place where I can just watch things or just lay it flat to do some typing. When I open up the cover, it does have auto wake just like the official Apple case and a lot of cases nowadays, even third party ones, do this. Now the official Apple case for the iPad mini cost about $60 which is really expensive versus the one from Moco which is about $10. And I think this cheaper iPad case offers more protection than the official one. I know for a fact with the Apple case, if I do drop it, I know the sides are going to be scuffed because there are no protection around the corners. And the case might pop out because it's only held by magnets. Now besides the corners being protected by this local case, you do have the space to connect your Apple Pencil. So in general, you can get a really budget friendly case. Usually on Amazon, you can find it between 10 to 20 bucks, so it's not that bad compared to the $60 price tag for Apple's case. Next up is a Bluetooth keyboard. For those who like to type on a physical keyboard, there are plenty of Bluetooth options out there on Amazon. Since this video is more travel based, I would go for the foldable ones or portable ones because they can actually fit in your pocket or bag. Now this keyboard I have here is from Moco. They did not send me this, I bought it with my own money. They did send me the case though but for my reasoning, I just want to stay on brand and I do like how thin it is. Since I do work faster when I'm typing on a physical keyboard like writing scripts and emails, I would prefer to bring an extra or external keyboard than typing on the screen. Now this keyboard did take a little bit to get used to because it is divided in the middle and I would say the B button is on the wrong side for me because I use my right hand to press the B button but it's on the left side on this keyboard. And it is very easy to use. You open the keyboard, it connects right away and you can start typing. Another great thing about this keyboard is you can connect up to three other devices. So if I wanted to, I can easily switch from my iPad to my Samsung tablet in a few seconds. Typing on this keyboard feels great. I would say the closest experience I can describe is like typing on a flat chiclet keyboard. Now for comfort, I would not say it's the best because it lays completely flat. So it doesn't really angle or anything. That's probably something you would have to get used to. And also if you do have really big hands, you would feel a bit cramped. Now the biggest con for me is it does have micro USB for charging. All the foldable keyboards I've been researching does charge through micro USB. So I know for a fact that in the future, I would want to upgrade this because I just don't want to carry an extra cable just for one thing. But in general, when I was looking at these prices, they are averaging about 30 bucks. So it's not a bad deal to have a physical keyboard with you at all times. For the mouse, the one I'm using is a Logitech Anywhere 3 mouse, which is pretty expensive. It goes for $80, but there is a good reason. Now you guys can replace this mouse with a more budget friendly option because on Amazon, they go for about 10 to 20 bucks. And the biggest reason why I chose this Logitech one is because it can horizontally scroll. I hate it when I have to repeatedly touch the screen to scroll sideways. And it does get annoying when you are editing because it's going to happen like 100 times within 30 minutes. I just think it's inefficient and I feel like I can get things done faster using this mouse. Now there is one more pro about this mouse is it can connect up to two other devices. So right now I have it connected to my iPad, my laptop, and my Samsung tablet. So with the click of a button, I can switch to another device right away without needing to reconnect or anything. So that is useful when you have multiple devices with you. The last item I have here is the pen. Lately, I've been writing a lot of things down and I've been enjoying it more often, but I did not want to pay $130 to get the Apple Pencil. And the budget pencil I have here is the Uogic U-Pencil 3 Plus. And the price for this is only $17 on Amazon. It can magnetically attach just like Apple's one, it can charge through USB-C, and it does feel pretty solid. It also have palm rejection and on the button on top, you can turn it off and on but it does have more commands. If you tap it once, it can go back to home. If you tap it twice, you can go back to the multitasking screen. It does automatically shut down after one hour but from my experience, I never write that long anyways. Another little thing I like about this pencil is I can actually see the battery life on the iPad. Okay, let's talk about the cons. The first one here is it does not have the double tap feature where you can switch to another tip or the eraser. 
I gotta say, it does get pretty annoying when you have to race. You would have to tap on the eraser button, erase your mistake, and then go back to your tap your pencil button and then start writing. It does slow down my writing experience, but I would say it's not as annoying because the iPad mini screen is pretty small, so you don't have to reach far to get to it. So that was the biggest feature I missed when I had my iPad 11 inch with the pencil. I really would want that. And honestly, if I am taking more seriously with the note taking, I would actually pay $130 for it. The second con about this pencil is it's not pressure sensitive. So the lines will not get thicker as you press harder on the screen. Since I mainly take notes, I don't really care about that feature, so I don't need it. If you are an artist or if you like to draw, I wouldn't really suggest using this pencil, but for $17, it's kind of hard to beat. Personally, I would still buy it, get that pencil experience, and once you get serious with your drawing and writing, then go for the official one. So those are the four budget accessories for the iPad mini 6. Oh, besides the mouse, because I'm willing to pay for something that makes my life easier. And maybe in the future, I would actually pay to upgrade to the Apple Pencil or just wait until the third generation comes out. It's much lighter than my 13 MacBook Pro, and it doesn't weigh me down when I'm traveling from the plane to the hotel or just going to a cafe. And when I was using this combo, I really enjoyed how all the stuff can fit into my jacket pocket. So I don't have to cause any awkwardness when I'm trying to get the stuff from my bag in the overhead bin and just causing a weight when people are trying to get to the airplane seat. And on top of that, the mouse and keyboard can connect to multiple devices, so it does have more value there. So let me know your thoughts down below if you have any questions, and also what are your favorite items for the iPad Mini 6. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys later.